Hello everyone, my name is Code Monkey Ken, and welcome to Build a PC Monday, Murder Your Console Edition. I know this is super late, and I'm sorry for that, but it is finally coming out now, so enjoy it, and here's a little intro, and then we will get right into the parts that I chose for this super awesome build. So, for this PC, my budget was around $500, and the reason I chose $500 is because if you're competing with consoles, and you want to do a console killer build, you need a console killer price. And if I go up into the six, seven, eight hundred dollar range, that's going to be way too high and out of the scope of trying to actually compete with consoles. So, most of the parts that I chose were either used parts, or I tried to get them, you know, refurbished or something, because when you're trying to get as low as possible, but get the best performance, you have to try and gauge the prices that you're being charged for everything. So, for the first part that I chose was the A8 6600K. Now, I know what you're thinking, well, why didn't you just get an Athlon CPU or something like that? And I could have done that, but with this build, I found this super cheap on sale for like 30 or 40 bucks, and I figured, why not throw an APU in there? If the graphics card happens to break down in the future, you still have something that can run games at at least somewhat of a decent frame rate. You won't have to worry about dealing with, you know, the, the Intel HD 4000 graphics or anything like that. You'll actually have something that'll run games at a decent uh, frame rate. And so that's why I kind of went with this processor. Now, its clock has a 3.9 gigahertz base clock with a 4.2 gigahertz boost clock. Now, that's pretty good for a CPU. It's a quad-core CPU, so it's still going to have its fair share of, you know, processing power if that's what you're trying to get out of it. Now, I mean, I wouldn't recommend this build for, like, heavy video editing or anything like that. This is more of an entry-level gaming PC with the best possible, you know, price per performance ratio. That's what I was really aiming for here. So, you know, and this build is not necessarily something you guys have to go with. If you guys have cool ideas, you know, post that in the comments and then I'll, I'll tell you about it. But for now, I'm going to tell you the rest of the parts. So, the next part that I went with was for the motherboard. I actually went with an MSI motherboard and that is the A58M E33. Now, this board is, it is a micro ATX board, so it's small. And it's also, a, the form factor I chose for this is because I was like, if we're trying to compete with consoles, let's try and get as close to the console architecture as possible. So let's try and kind of squeeze it down and do the smallest box possible. So that's why I got this board to fit it in the case that I got for it, which is a Senti case. It's the SS6 2440. Now, this case is really cool, and it is just the... Everything about it is so cool. It's a white case. It's got a lot of things going for it well. Like, the accessibility inside the case is just beyond anything that I have ever seen. The case itself actually has a two screws in the back. You just twist them off, and then you can actually pop the case open. And I'm showing you a little bit of footage of it right now because it's really cool the way that you can do it. You can get in, you can access all the internals without having to struggle or reach inside or do anything that's going to strain yourself building this computer. This computer is really easy to build, and that's why I chose it, because this tower is just amazing for the build quality. Now, for the motherboard that I was talking about, I would not overclock on it at all, because it is it just doesn't have the, the heat sinks on it that you would want out of an overclocking board, so I would just leave this... A8 6600K just on its own. If you want to overclock, since it is overclocking ready, I would go out and get maybe a little bit more expensive motherboard that has a little bit better heat sinks on it so that when you go to overclock the processor, you don't burn the board up and catch it on fire. Um, besides that, the next thing I want to talk about is the graphics card. For this build, I wanted to get as much power out of this PC for 500 bucks as possible, and so I went out and I got an R9 270, and I got this thing for $130 used on eBay. But this thing is like brand freaking new when I got it. I found a really good deal, and I used that deal to kind of gauge what 
other things in that price range I could get, and anything else, I mean, a 750 Ti was going to be in the high 100s, even the used ones, and honestly, for this build, since we went with an AMD processor, I kind of wanted to go AMD on the graphics card as well, just to kind of keep everything nice and from the same manufacturer. So, this, this GPU is just amazing for 1080p gaming. It is going to destroy any of the consoles. The Xbox One has nothing on it. The PS4 can probably keep up behind it just a little bit, but this R9 270 for 1080p gaming, unless you're planning on playing The Witcher 3 at max settings and then I can't help you there, go get a better computer, but it is just amazing for 1080p gaming. And I can't say enough about this graphics card since it was the first graphics card I ever owned, and it is just fun, a fun graphics card to have. It just, it runs so great. Okay, so for the hard drive, since we are kind of going with a cheaper PC, I don't recommend SSDs for anything under 800 bucks because SSDs, while they are getting cheaper, they're still not cost effective for this price range. Now you can always go out, you know, maybe go work an extra shift at, at McDonald's or wherever it is you work, since if you're getting a PC this cheap, you probably work somewhere like that. I mean, I know, I know my fair share of crappy jobs, but for this, I went with a one terabyte Western Digital Blue HDD. Now, it was 50 bucks, but the, just for the money, one terabyte of storage, you don't even get, you don't get that on the Xbox One, you don't get that on the PS4, you definitely don't get that on the PS3 or 360. So, one terabyte of storage is going to last you a whole hell of a long time for the money that you're spending. 50 bucks one terabyte of storage, you won't have to upgrade your storage for at least a year, unless you're just buying games every 10 seconds, at which point, yeah, you'll fill it up eventually, but for this build, it's perfect. Now, for the power supply, now, GPUs like the R9 270 do eat up a lot of power, but when it comes to the actual idle loads, the idle loads on this PC are something like 80 watts, and the full just pushing it as hard as it can go is somewhere around 320, 330. So I went on ahead and got the CX430 watt from Corsair power supply. When you get power supplies, get it from a reputable brand. Do not get it from a crappy brand because you will hate your life. You seriously don't want to be in the room when your PC catches fire. It's not fun. I've had it happen before, and it makes you just want to jump off a bridge. So get a decent power supply. This thing cost me like 60 bucks. It, was, it wasn't used. I ended up getting it brand new because when it comes to a power supply, don't ever get a used power supply. I don't care what anybody tells you. Don't get used power supplies, and don't get power supplies that come pre-installed in the tower. Get your own power supply you'll just have a better life that way. Now, if you plan on getting a bigger GPU someday, like, say, a 970 or something to slap in here, I would recommend getting a bigger case just because this this case, while it does, as you can see right here, while it does fit a pretty decent-sized graphics card, most 970s are going to struggle to fit inside this case. So, with that, the only thing left to talk about is the RAM. Now, I could have gotten 8 gigs of RAM. I could have done that. I could have gotten 8 gigs, 1600 megahertz. But I thought to myself, 8 gigs of RAM at 1600 megahertz to run a GPU. Or, I could get 4 gigs of RAM, 1866 megahertz. That way, if the GPU happens to crap out, since we did go used here, you can still use that APU I slapped in there. I was thinking about it so that you're never going to be out of an actual gaming PC. So if your GPU just happens to catch fire and crap out on you, or just some by some random circumstances you have a lightning strike outside your house and a surge comes in and, you know, screws up your uh, R9 270, you still have that A8 6600K to play games on with 4 gigs of 1866 megahertz memory. The faster memory is going to help you out in games, until you can get yourself another GPU, because I know a lot, a lot like you guys, like me, I'm not, you know, I don't have a lot of money, and so if something crapped out on me, that would really suck, and I wouldn't be able to just replace it right away. So having something as a backup is definitely a good idea. So I went with 1866 megahertz because it was the better route. 
Now, this entire PC comes out to $530 is how much I spent on it. It was a little bit more with tax, I think something like 534 bucks or something like that, but 530 is the general price. And this PC will kill any console on the market, you have my word on that. You don't have to worry about upgrading it for at least a year. Now it is kind of a now build, it's not a future proof build. So if you're trying to run games at max settings two years from now, you can forget it. You're going to have to get a better GPU. But games at 1080p at max settings, I was able to get Bioshock Infinite 1080p max settings with anti-aliasing turned off at 60 frames per second. No problem. It was even getting up to like 73, 74 in some spots. So you, you can already run Bioshock Infinite better than the PS3 can better than, you know, the 360 can, so you don't have to worry about that. And I don't know, they're not releasing it on PS4 or Xbox One, so you don't got to worry about that. But you want the best experience on most of the current games today. The R9 270 runs you perfect. This build is amazing. So, you know, that is the $530 Murder Your Console edition of Build the PC Monday. My name is Code Monkey Ken. If you have any suggestions, any questions about this build, Anything, any suggestions that you would like to change in this build, put in the comment section. Let me know, and I will come back and I'll tell you what I think about it. And if I think that your idea is good, I'll even make a video of it talking about how I think that's a better ideal over what I've put in this video. So, again, my name is Code Monkey Ken. Make sure to click that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video.